G'day, this is Andrew Price, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add some surface imperfections to any material. So this is what we created in the last video, which is a very simple, basic wooden floor material. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take some of the overlay textures off of Polygon, and we're going to use it to make our wooden floor look worn, like there's footprints, like there's scratches, basically just wear and tear, because this is the stuff that really makes a material shine. <laughs> Not uh, literally, but yeah, you know what I mean. It, it's what gives it a lot of character and makes it look real. So first things first, for a floor material, sort of the biggest thing that you would want to do to, you know, make it look worn is like it's actually been walked on. Because really having a, having a completely shiny floor like this wouldn't really exist. There's all sorts of smudges and things, even on like a brand new floor that's just been built. So let's go about doing that. So there's a number of these materials which are on Polygon. Um, so for example, we've got this one here, floor smudges type A1. I think there's actually... Yeah, medium is down there for some reason. But anyways, this is the one that I'm going to use. So I'll put the links for all of these in the YouTube description so you can download it. But essentially, with each of these overlays, you'll generally see two images. Uh, you've got a black, black and white version and a... 16-bit oh, version of that as well, like a TIFF file if you wanted more you know, depth in it, but you'll also have an invert of that, which is variation two. But anyways, go ahead and download them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it in here. So I'm going to go texture, image texture, and let's load it in. Okay, so let me just pull up <laughs> where it's saved. Surface imperfections, floor smudges, medium. Okay, so I'm going to use, say, 3K because you pay for it when you use larger image sizes because it goes and uses more memory when you render. So I, I generally don't go higher than 3K for most materials, but anyways. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna use this black one here, right? The black and white one. Um, might as well use the TIFF file since it's there. I guarantee you I won't see much of a difference in this sort of scene, but let's go ahead and use that. Okay, so what I wanna do is, uh, first of all, set it to non-color data, which is very important when you're using anything that isn't contributing to the base color. So everything that's not this. Um, now, if I control shift and click on this image texture, you'll be able to see what this looks like. And you're only able to do that control shift thing, by the way, if you enable the node Wrangler add-on, then you can control shift, click on anything and see how it looks. But anyways, this is what this texture looks like. So what I wanna do is I wanna make this affect the roughness of my shader. Well, if I just took this and I plug this straight into the roughness input, you could see if I move around, it's not very visible very clearly, but you can see that I am actually having this image texture affecting the roughness. The only problem is, is that I have lost this texture, this wooden floor, which came with my wood, right? So I wanna have both that and I want to have this on top of it. So the good thing is, is that these are both black and white images. It's not like the normal map where you have to be really fiddly about how you blend things together. It's it's very easy to, uh, yeah, to combine these two. All you need to do is add in a mix RGB node like this, and then I connect this into there. Let me just move this over so that it's a little bit easier to see. But essentially, you just want to connect both of them into the same mix node and then take, uh, well, actually, yeah, just look at it from here. You can see that with that mix node, I'm now controlling going back, back and forwards, one or the other. But because I know that this is completely black except for some white points of detail, all I want is the white areas. So I can change this from mix to screen. And now we've got both of them. So this is what the original wood floor looks like. And now we've got those steps coming over the top of it. And this factor value now becomes the strength of those footprints. Okay, very cool. So now if I have a look at the shader, you'll see, oh, let me plug that in. There we go. You'll see that it is now how it should look. So we've got some little footprints and we've also got the original wood as well. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can actually do this for, um, you can add more and more overlays on top of each other because it's just black and white images. So you can just repeat that step and do it as many times as you like. Like say, for example, I was looking on here and I wanted to have, 
let's say something like this, like wiping residue. Okay, so let's add one of those. Okay, because this, you know, this looks okay, but it doesn't look, you know, doesn't look as real as it could be. So let's add in another one here. So I'm going to go with wiping residue light, I guess. Again, I'll put these in the uh, description. Actually, maybe something a bit heavier, medium. Okay, there we go. So I'll just use this one. Oof, why does it do that? Click open. And now I want to add this over the top of this. So mix RGB node. And just like before, connect both of them into the mix. And then because I know I'm ignoring the black values and I just want to take the white values, I'm going to set this to screen. And there we go. So now if I just connect this into that screen node, now I have both of them. And I can turn that up and I'll have more of those wiping residue effects there. So it's a really easy way just to add add story to your materials. And it's, I mean, as you can see, this is really simple to do. It's quite fun even. Um, imagine that, something fun. Um, but yeah, it's something that a lot of artists don't do. And it's something that'll help separate your work from everyone else's is when you've got like proper detail in your materials. Um, now let's try something else. Let's say, for example, we also wanted to have like residue, right? Like some, like actual, maybe like dirt, like across the floor. So for that, we wouldn't be impacting the, the smudges necessarily. We would be adding um, color to it or, or like, let's say dust, like actual dust on our flooring here. Well, to do that, we would want to be adding something to our base color. So I want to have the original wood like that. But just like before, I want to combine in, like, let's just say this wiping residue. Yeah, let's let's use that. So I'll keep that down there. But what I'll do as well is I'll add another mix RGB node up here, set this to screen just like I did before, and then connect that into there. And now I can have this affect the actual color of the texture. Now it's really heavy because it's really noticeable. So I wanna make sure that I don't turn it up too much, but it will have an effect there. Um, and if you don't want it to appear all over the material like equally, which is what it's doing now, like, cause you'll notice like if you, you know, like uh, if you look at your computer monitor, right? If it's a black screen or something like that, if you look at it front on, you might, it might look very clean, but when you look at it along the surface, like, or like on the edge like that, you'll start seeing little bits of dust appear. And that's because that dust is more noticeable with the Fresnel, like on the edges of the plane. So what you can do is up here, instead of making this screen effect apply to everywhere equally, if you add in a Fresnel node like this, and then drag that to affect the factor input of that screen node, watch this. So you can see, as I look at it from top down, I can't see any of that residue. But then as I pull down, you can see that it starts to appear. So this is a really easy way to just make materials that actually react to the camera. It's so simple to do, um, but it just, I don't know, it just adds another another depth to your, to your scene, um, to your material, I mean. So really, really easy to do. And there you go. Okay, now let's try something a little bit trickier. Let's say we want to add in another bump map, okay? So we've already got a normal map down here, right? But let's say we want to add in another normal map. How do you combine two normal maps together? Okay, so let me just duplicate this image texture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a scratches. Let's use gun scratches three. Again, I'll put these links in the description. Um, but yeah, okay, let's say, all right, for starters, because there's two different types of normal maps, I'll show you first of all, one way you could combine two different uh, maps. If you've already got a normal map that's being used, if you've only got another one that you wanna use, it's very easy. You can just use a, this grayscale displacement map because they do pretty much the same thing as the normal map. So if I took that, click open. Now, if I wanna make this, you know, uh, interact with this normal map here, all I need to do is add a bump map node, connect this uh, like this, right? It, it hasn't had any effect so far, but if I take this and connect it to the height input, I've now got both at the same time. I've got the normal map because that's feeding through there, but I've also got the grayscale bump on top of it. Okay, and now I've got the scratches. So that's really, really simple, but 
let's say for whatever reason, yeah, you've got two normal maps and you need to combine them together. Okay, so this, this map instead of that grayscale one, I've got this normal map here. So this is where a lot of artists get held up because there's not really an easy way to combine two normal maps because these these maps here, they've got, I mean, you really can't see it in this view, but there's a lot of information going on there. Like the, the way that the axes are pointing with the color, it's not a very easy way to combine two of them together. Um, so previously I thought the way to do it was just like, yeah, like mix RGB, maybe set this to overlay or something, right? But that doesn't have the effect that you would want. It Like it's not a proper fading thing and you lose a lot of information and it doesn't come out properly. What you should be using instead is a custom <laughs> no group, which I'll put in the description below, but it's a, it's a little no group, um, which I find really handy. So what you need to do, oh, which one is it? Hmm, my PBR, my material, Oh, I can't remember which one I actually <laughs> saved it as. Ah, uh, there it is, that one. Okay, so what you do is uh, just select this once you've downloaded it. Um, click Append. So I went to File, Append. And then click on No Tree. And then what you're looking for here is Normal Map Mixer. So this is, you won't see anything until you hit Shift A and then say Group, Normal Map and Mixer. So if you have a look at this, it's a really complex... Honestly, there's no point in learning this. This is just purely mathematical. So don't feel ashamed in like using somebody else's no group because this, this thing works and it's actually really handy. You'll be surprised how often you need to combine two normal nodes, normal maps together. So all you need to do is just drag the two together, right? You've got base and you've got detail right underneath it. Okay. And now I can control with this factor amount the, uh, yeah, the scratches. Uh, intensity essentially right there so if I want less or more just turn it up or down and in my opinion honestly normal maps they generally create a better look okay it's, I mean sometimes they don't really and there's not much of a difference but in this case I think that the scratches look a lot better as a normal map than when they were just uh, using the grayscale bump um, but anyways so that is basically it um, so we talked about that the smudges the roughness yeah, that's really it. So as you can see, it's very easy to, uh, to yeah, make, make your material have some history. Give it some story behind it. It's a really quick and easy thing to do. And not a lot of people do it. Um, but that's why we've, uh, yeah, we provided you with all these maps. So you can uh, get the leg up on the competition, so to speak. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, put it in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.